Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy, and in this series we're discovering the lore, backstory and characters of Overwatch's heroes, including more detail through their in-game voice lines and interactions. Before any map starts and during the game on various triggers, Overwatch heroes chatter with and react to each other in some funny in-game ways. These give us some great extra insights into hero character, interests and backstories too. In this video we're looking at Widowmaker's story, through her interactions with fellow heroes and the world around her. The most effective assassin of the rampant terrorist organisation Talon, Widowmaker is an example of how far medical and neural conditioning techniques have come in the Overwatch scientific world. Currently being deployed around the world on a variety of Talon missions, Widow seems to once again be on a collision course to fight agents of Overwatch, the organisation she used to be linked to before a tragic set of events. Firstly we'll run through Widowmaker's lore and story. Although the Omnic Crisis was over, the need for international peacekeeping was not. Rogue dictators, environmental threats, rogue Omnics and terrorist organisations were but some of the threats and challenges that Overwatch had to face. It was the last of these that Gerard Lacroix at some point was assigned to combat. As an Overwatch agent, he was entrusted with the vital task of spearheading operations against Talon, a terrorist organisation. Only a baby of around three when the Omnic Crisis began, and roughly seven or eight when it ended, we know little of Amelie's childhood years, or even her maiden name currently. Given relative dates and ages of characters, it's safe to assume Amelie married Gerard Lacroix during Overwatch's golden era, and probably in the later of the two decades of peace Overwatch was to bring to the world after the crisis. It was Amelie's marriage to Gerard and his Overwatch connections that were ultimately to lead to the creation of the Widowmaker. Talon became aware of Gerard's role and sought to deal with the problem in the most direct way possible by attempting to kill him. Whether through Gerard's competency, Overwatch's protection or Talon's ineffectiveness, we don't know, but we do know that there were several unsuccessful attempts to eliminate Gerard. After this, Talon decided to change its strategy. In a chilling echo of the ideas of asymmetric warfare that Overwatch had used to end the Omnic Crisis, they stopped fighting him head-on and switched tactics, targeting his wife, Amelie. Talon operatives kidnapped Amelie, subjected her to an intense program of neural reconditioning. Her personality became suppressed, her will broken, and she was reprogrammed as a sleeper Talon agent. Amelie was found by Overwatch and returned to her normal life, apparently with no visible effects from her ordeal. Two weeks later, this was proved to not be the case. She killed Gerard in his sleep and vanished. Overwatch seemed to have believed that Amelie had been kidnapped once more by Talon, but the truth was different. Her mission complete, she returned to Talon, and they completed the process of transforming her into a living weapon. After extensive covert tactics and combat training, she was subjected to some form of medical procedure, we assume, altering her physiology and drastically slowing her heart rate, turning her skin cold and blue and numbing her ability to experience human emotion. Amelie was gone. Now the perfect living weapon and assassin, she would feel little beyond the thrill of a kill. After this treatment, Widowmaker was then unleashed into the world as a weapon of Talon. The next we see of Widowmaker is in a turning point of Anna Amari's life. In Anna's comic, Legacy, we see Overwatch deployed on a hostage rescue mission against Talon forces who are attempting to kidnap some scientists for their knowledge of an unknown project. When the Overwatch rescue squad comes under fire by an unknown sniper, Morrison informs Anna that he's heard chatter about a new Talon sniper as fast as lightning and the sniper's skills are shown as they take down two Overwatch agents in the blink of an eye from two different directions. After the sniper reveals their position, the second in command of Overwatch puts a bullet straight into their head armor, revealing to Anna that her adversary is actually Amelie Lacroix. Anna hesitates in the spur of the moment, confused by Amelie's sudden reappearance, and the emotionless Widowmaker has time for a return shot, catching Anna's scope and causing her the severe injuries that are to lead to her vanishing, presumed dead. Fast forward to the present day, and Overwatch has been shut down around six years ago. There are still many threats to the world, including a second Dominic crisis, and Talon is seemingly more active than ever before, with Widowmaker one of the agents leading the charge. After the events of the animated short Recall, where Winston recalls all former Overwatch agent, Widowmaker was in action again for Talon in Alive, where she assassinated Takata Mondata, the leader of the Shambhali, the order which Zenyatta belongs to, and a figurehead of a movement promoting Omnic rights and Omnic human coexistence. We've also seen Widowmaker then team up with Reaper in a raid on our Overwatch Museum in an attempt to steal the legendary weapon and symbol, the Doomfist, which was denied ultimately by Winston, Tracer, and some unexpected intervention. Why Talon wants to foster conflict between humans and Omnics, what they might want with the Doomfist, why they're working with Reaper, and their agenda in general are still unknown to us at this point. As we learn more about Talon, so too will we learn more about Widowmaker's past and what her future may have in store. As a child, we know that Amelie was afraid of spiders, and she was told they felt no emotion and their hearts never beat. After her kill of Mandata, the now Widowmaker tells us that at the moment of the kill, apparently spiders never feel more alive. This is what Amelie has become, a cold killer, 
Whether the calculating and ruthless Widowmaker will ever have a chance to change, we simply don't know. And there's a very important question. Could she deal with the horrors of her past if she does? Widowmaker is a lethal agent and often sent in as a solo operative, as we've seen in Alive. So her thoughts on how she works aren't a massive surprise to us. Oh, I prefer to work alone. I don't get mad. I get even. And given the former Amélie Lacroix is now known as Widowmaker, unsurprisingly, we get a lot of spider references from her. The widow's kiss. Caught in my web. I will draw them into my web. I find it kind of interesting to see that Widow portrays her kills and work as almost an art form. She has a few lines where she either talks about things in a cultured way, or refers to her work as a cultured kind of action. Oh, a canvas for my masterpiece. Such artistry. Now, given her cool, calm demeanour and lack of emotion, Widows rarely want to get too emotional over things, but she does have a little satisfaction in a job well done, and also a little bit of smack talk too. In your dreams. Oh, exquisite. Oh, did that sting? Amateur. On to humour, Widow seems to end a lot of people's existences rather than relationships, but hearing her come out with this classic breakup line is kind of funny. It's not you, it's me. And finally, a little break of the fourth wall. I think it's quite funny that Widow mentions this when she has a wall hack of sorts rather than Soldier 76, whose sight's ability is certainly a little bit more aimbotty. What's an aimbot? Okay, time for the reference game. As always, I'll give you a little time after each to try and work them out. Step into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Now this is a reference to a fairy tale of a cunning spider ensnaring a naive fly through the use of seduction and flattery. It's a cautionary tale against those who use flattery and charm to disguise their true more evil intentions. It's interesting to know that this is actually quite common in various kinds of culture and pop culture. Blizzard have actually used it. The spider boss in the Nexoramus raid, Anubra Khan, actually says something similar to this when people enter his lair, step into my parlor I believe. You can also spot it in Gears of War referred to in various ways, Undertale, apparently Blade and Soul, and music, TV series, and films as well. Cheers to Wikipedia for that. Let them eat cake. That phrase is quite often misattributed to Marie Antoinette, the queen during some of the French revolutionary times. However, it was actually in Jean-Jacques Rousseau's confessions that may not have been said by her at all. It was a comment apparently upon hearing that the peasants had no bread, showing a disregard for the peasants or a complete lack of understanding that the absence of basic food was due to poverty. Another interesting one is Widowmaker's tattoo. This wraps around her arm and apparently it's meant to be read as Arénia de Soir Cauchemar which translates to, roughly apparently, Evening Spider Nightmare. So this is apparently a play on the second half of a common French superstition. Araignée de matin, chagrin, araignée de soir, espoir. Apparently, if you see a spider in the morning, and spiders won't come out in the morning until the dews disappeared. No morning dew apparently also means that rain is on the way. The phrase also sometimes includes araignée du midi souci, spider at noon worries or concerns, because a spider working on a web in midday means the same thing. Rain should be coming, for example. However, if you see a spider out in the evening, this means that it's relaxed enough that you can expect nice weather. Big credit to Reddit for that one as well, link in the description below for the thread. Finally, a little bit of learn French with Widowmaker. Widowmaker has a lot of French lines, and there are some that you'll never hear in the English client or dub. I've picked up a few here, uh, there are about 30 or 35 minimum, so I could do a whole video on these if I was any good at translating. I might give it a go in future. Personne n'échappe à mon regard. Personne n'échappe à mon regard, that's no one can escape or no one can hide from my sight. Ça pique, n'est-ce pas? Ça pique, n'est-ce pas? It stings, doesn't it? It probably stings a bit more than that if you get a bullet from Widow in you. À la vie, à la mort. À la vie, à la mort. To life, to death, or also apparently for better, for worse. Le baiser de la veuve. Baiser de la veuve, the widow's kiss. Also the name of Widowmaker's rifle. Yes, an interesting way of describing being shot by Widowmaker. There are a bunch of other lines. I enjoyed these. I really hope I haven't triggered you too much with my accent, French fans. And I'd love to hear if you could jump in with any of your favourite lines in French in the comments below that we in English might not hear. Due to her past links with Overwatch through her husband Gerard, and also her combat history recently, Widowmaker's got a bunch of ties with a few of the characters in-game. Widowmaker and Anna obviously have history. The two snipers haven't forgotten the confrontation where Anna hesitated, was shot by Widowmaker, and sustained the injuries that led her to drop off the map, be assumed dead, and lose her right eye. The two may have even had history before that though, from one very interesting exchange that we hear before a game starts. Now do remember, voice lines can be hints at canon story and lore, but they're delivered in an out of story context. So when Widow and Anna spawn on the same team, Anna actually comments on Gerard, Widow's husband that she killed. Gerard was a fool to love someone like you. You don't know anything about him. 
Now this conversation, it's important to note, has probably never taken place in the actual canon Overwatch story, the story that we know and love outside the game, and it may well never happen, but it raises many interesting questions. How well did Anna know Amelie before she became Widowmaker? And indeed, how well did she know Gerard? As one of the Overwatch operatives, presumably under Morrison's and her command, we've seen already that Anna knows a lot about her family in Overwatch from her comic. Why would Anna express such disapproval of Amelie? And why would Amelie counter with, you don't know anything about him? What would Gerard have revealed about himself to his wife Amelie to cause her to resort in such a way? Gerard and Amelie's past is an amazing topic for a future comic, so it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. Outside of Widow talking about her ex-husband, she's clearly not totally secure about her sniping skills compared to Anna. Before a game, Widow can insult her before Anna gives a very feisty response. You were once a legend, but what are you now? Just a shell of a woman. I take it you don't want my autograph then. And when Widow sees Anna get a kill when the two are teamed up, she might occasionally come out with this. What are you so worried about, Widow? Not bad. For second best. When Widow kills an enemy, Anna, she does, of course, like to try and rub it in too. The world's greatest sniper. Formerly. You should have stayed dead. Finally, when Widow kills a Farah, she now can't resist making a quip either. Like mother, like daughter. In Alive in the Intro Cinematic, we've seen Tracer and Widow's battle and rivalry ongoing. Whether it spanned into when Overwatch was still active, we don't know, but the two have a lot of back and forth. Tracer likes to tease Widow, in a throwback to the museum trailer, where she asks Widow what she's looking at. And Widow gets a response this time though. What you looking at? An annoyance. And in an out of story sense, I can totally see these two not being happy at working together. Tiens, tiens. It looks like we will be working together. Don't think I'm happy about that. Finally, Widow even criticizes Tracer's tactics in a newer interaction. <laughs> so predictable. Even when you reverse time, you always make the same decisions. Widow did get the better of Tracer in Alive, and Tracer got the upper hand with Winston in the museum. So it'll be interesting to see how the next duel between these two rivals plays out. Reaper's been working with Talon on two occasions now. We've seen him with Talon Grunts and Recall, with Watchpoint Gibraltar, and with Widowmaker in the museum trailer, where they unsuccessfully attempted to recapture the Doomfist. The two recall this failed mission when they're on the same team in game. Looks like we're working together again. Let's hope it goes better than the time at the museum. Now, this next one I think is a new interaction, but Widowmaker has this in her voice files. I've never heard it personally. Do let me know if you have in game. La Faucheuse claims another. Apparently, La Faucheuse is a death allegory like the Grim Reaper in French, and it could be a line that she says when she kills someone, or as Reaper is called Faucheur in the French version of Overwatch, she could say this maybe when seeing Reaper kill someone too. What do you reckon? Widow's been the veteran of many a battlefield, so it works with her slightly condescending superior personality and nature that she's a little bit snooty about D.Va's aging experience on first glance. However, D.Va's a frontline fighter for Mecha, let's not forget, and doesn't take that insult lying down. This is no place for children. Who are you calling a child? As fellow snipers, Widowmaker and Hansel would probably have a few things to say to each other too if they were to meet. Both have got a lot of confidence in their weapons of choice in this pre-match conversation. I would take my bow against your rifle any day. That would be the last mistake you ever made. Who do you think would come out better in that fight, Widowmaker or Hanzo? Interestingly, we also get a potential insight into both Talon's operating methods and Hanzo's moral thinking with another line between the two. Talon could restore your family's empire. But at what cost? Could Talon restore Hanzo's Shimada clan to their former criminal empire status? And why now would Hanzo not take this offer? The cost of being in debt to Talon would surely be a high price indeed. Through her marriage to Gerard, I'm sure Widowmaker in her former life as Amelie Lacroix would have known Jack Morrison. It's interesting that when Widowmaker kills Soldier 76 in game, she'll come out with this recognition of his former glory and status. A legend falls. Finally, there are a few fun lines when Widow is actually revived or damage boosted by a mercy. I don't think there's too much of this beyond the line just being fun, but it's always funny to hear. Hmm. You must like having me around. You must like me, or you must really like me. With a dropship and the resources of a large terrorist organization available to her, Widow certainly traveled a fair chunk of the world of Overwatch. We've obviously seen her in King's Row and wherever the museum is, as well as being deployed in Anna's first comic, Legacy. As a result, she's got a couple of map interactions in different places. In Numbani, the Doomfist is being transported in the payload to the Heritage Museum, where it's going to be the centerpiece of an exhibition. I'm not leaving without that gauntlet. Widow is clearly keen to make up for the embarrassment she suffered in Overwatch's reveal trailer when her and Reaper's attempt to get the Doomfist was thwarted by Winston, Tracer, and a couple of plucky kids. 
Kings Row and Widow, of course, are very intertwined, as we know from Alive, when Widowmaker assassinated Dakota Mondata, the leader of the Shambhali. With her ability to experience human emotion numbed, Widow seems to only feel some satisfaction at a job well done. Ah, the sight of one of my finest kills. That day, I felt alive. We still don't know why Talon killed Mondata, and how this could help to advance whatever agenda they have. His death is clearly significant enough, as, in a time of Omnic and human conflict once again, one of the key potential peace bringers has been silenced. Whatever the significance, perhaps this is what Widowmaker is talking about when she says in one of her lines that... A single death can change everything. Thanks so much for tuning in to my Hero Voice Line and Story series. I know we've had a short break, but we're back with vengeance. We're going to try and do one a week from now on. Check the playlist linked here on the left for more videos like this of different heroes. I'm going to be doing every single hero in Overwatch. If you like this video, please hit that like button below, subscribe and comment with what lines you enjoyed most and what hero you'd like to see of the remaining covered next. Until next time, I've been Hammy. Take it easy.